This video presents a brief survey of the patient's thorax and respiration, examination of the posterior thorax using inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation, and examination of the anterior thorax using the same techniques. In this video, the examiner will assess a healthy patient. Keep in mind that other patients may have the same normal findings or may display normal variations or abnormal findings. Begin your examination with a brief survey of the patient's chest and respiration. Observe the rate, rhythm, depth, and effort of breathing, and listen to the sound of his breathing. Normally, a resting adult breathes easily, quietly, and regularly about 14 to 20 times a minute. Inspect the patient's neck for supraclavicular retractions and for contractions of the sternomastoid muscles. Normally, they're not present. It looks normal. Cross your arms like this. Then have the patient place his arms on the opposite shoulders and breathe normally. Now examine the posterior thorax, beginning with inspection. Observe the chest for shape, symmetry and deformities. Also inspect the overlying skin. Palpate the chest to locate any areas of pain or tenderness or to assess any lesions or abnormalities you may have found during inspection. To assess respiratory expansion, place your thumbs close to the patient's spine at the level of the 10th ribs and spread your hands lightly over the thorax. Ask the patient to inhale deeply and exhale fully while you watch the divergence of your thumbs and feel for the range and symmetry of movement. Next, using this pattern, systematically palpate for tactile fremitus. Using the balls of your hands, 99. palpate and compare symmetrical areas for 99. tactile fremitus as the patient repeats 99. 99. Identify areas of 99. increased, decreased, or absent fremitus. Continue the examination by percussing the chest in a systematic manner, going from side to side as you move down the thorax. Percuss down the chest wall from the apices to the bases of the lungs. Listen to the intensity, pitch, and duration of your percussion notes and decide what kind of notes you are hearing. Normal lungs are resonant. Locate any areas where you hear abnormal notes. Next, use percussion to identify the level of diaphragmatic dullness and measure diaphragmatic excursion. Now, if it is all right with you, I'll put some ink marks on your back. Then percuss downward from above the expected level of diaphragmatic no, dullness until dullness is definitely heard. Mark the level of full expiration. This time, breathe all the way in and hold. Next, have the patient inhale deeply and hold it in. Then percuss downward to the level of dullness at full inspiration and mark it. You can breathe. Repeat this process on the other side. Here, same thing. Breathe all the way out and hold it. Then measure the distance between the expiratory and inspiratory levels of dullness. The distance is normally five to six centimeters. Before auscultating the posterior thorax, let's review normal and adventitious breath sounds. Normal breath sounds are classified by their intensity, pitch and duration during inspiration and expiration. Vesicular breath sounds are soft and low pitched. They're normally heard during inspiration and the first third of expiration and can be heard throughout most of the lung fields. Bronchial breath sounds are louder and higher in pitch than vesicular sounds. The expiratory sound lasts longer than the inspiratory sound, and a silent gap separates these two sounds. 
Normally, bronchial breath sounds are sometimes heard over the manubrium. Bronchovesicular sounds have an intermediate pitch and intensity. Inspiratory and expiratory sounds are about equal in duration, and a silent gap may or may not separate them. These sounds may be heard in the first and second interspaces anteriorly, and between the scapulae posteriorly. Let's listen to these sounds again to compare them. Bronchial, bronchovesicular, and vesicular sounds, in that order. Two basic types of adventitious or added breath sounds are the discontinuous sounds, crackles, and the continuous sounds, wheezes and ronchi. Crackles are intermittent, non-musical, and brief, like dots in time. Fine crackles are soft, high-pitched, and very brief. Coarse crackles are louder, lower-pitched, and longer. Compared to crackles, wheezes and ronchi last much longer and sound more musical. Wheezes are relatively high-pitched and have a hissing or shrill quality. Ronchi have a lower-pitched snoring quality. To auscultate the posterior thorax, begin at the apices and proceed downward, moving systematically from side to side and comparing the sounds in symmetrical areas. Using the diaphragm of the stethoscope, listen to at least one entire breathing cycle at each location. Listen to the duration, pitch, and intensity of the inspiratory and expiratory sounds, decide what type of breath sounds you're hearing, and note any added sounds. Now this time, breathe deeply through your mouth. Let me know if it is uncomfortable. During auscultation, have the patient breathe deeply through his mouth. If the patient becomes uncomfortable, allow a rest period. Now let's listen as the examiner auscultates. If you hear bronchial or bronchovesicular breath sounds where they should not be, listen for transmitted voice sounds. Now, I want to say 99, please. While auscultating 99. the chest, ask the patient to say 99. 99. 99. Voice sounds 99. that are louder and clearer than normal are 99. called bronchophony. 99. 
this time would you say e then have the patient say e, e. when e sounds like e. a and has a nasal quality e. egophony is present e e this time would you whisper one two three please? finally ask the patient to whisper one two three when these sounds are louder and clearer than normal, whispered pectoriloquy is present. All these changes in voice sounds suggest the air-filled lung has become airless. To examine the anterior thorax, have the patient lie supine and breathe normally. Observe the condition of the skin and inspect the chest for deformities, asymmetry, and respiratory movement. Next, palpate the chest to locate any areas of tenderness no. or to assess any lesions or abnormalities. No. Now assess respiratory expansion. Place your thumbs along each costal margin with your hands along the lateral rib cage. Raise loose skin folds between your thumbs and ask the patient to take a deep breath. Observe the displacement of your thumbs and feel for the range and symmetry of movement as the patient exhales fully. Next, following this pattern, palpate for tactile fremitus. As the patient repeats 99, 99, 99 use the ball of your hand to compare symmetrical areas. Because fremitus is difficult to feel through the breast tissue of women, you may need to gently displace the breast. Percuss the anterior thorax in symmetrical areas, proceeding from the supraclavicular area down to the sixth rib or below. Again, compare both sides. Identify your percussion notes and their locations. You should hear resonance over the anterior lung fields. If you want to check the level of the right diaphragm anteriorly, percuss from resonant lung downward to liver dullness. To auscultate the anterior chest, take the same systematic approach you used for percussing the anterior thorax. If necessary, gently displace the patient's breasts to auscultate all important areas. Listen to the duration, pitch, and intensity of the inspiratory and expiratory sounds, decide what type of breath sounds you are hearing, and note any added sounds. If you hear heart sounds near the heart, try to ignore them while you concentrate on the breath sounds. Now let's listen as the examiner auscultates. say 99 again. If you hear bronchial or bronchovesicular breath sounds where they should not be, listen for transmitted voice sounds. 99. To summarize, 
Examination of the thorax and lungs includes a brief survey of the thorax and respiration, inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation of the posterior and anterior thorax.